All right. Well, next up we have Vadim Rotovsky um, dialing in from Bruno, and he's going to walk us through um, the current release process and tell us a little bit about where things live in GitHub. So, Vadim, you want to share your screen and take it away. Hello. My name is Vadim, and I work for Red Hat, and my uh, day job is being an engineer for OpenShift, but um, in the evening, I like to tinker with um, OKD and other community distributions. So uh, today, we'll take a guide on about how OKD gets built, where are things happening, uh, where's the source, and uh, why do we need such a complex CI to make it happen. So our final step in the release process is uploading the binaries of installer and OC to GitHub. But in order to make it happen, um, we first need to build it from the source code. And as everything else, things are happening in the organization called uh, OpenShift, where the code for both OCP and OKD being created. For those who are not familiar with uh, some acronyms, OCP stands for OpenShift Container Platform. That's a product which Red Hat officially supports, provides a subscription to the clients, and OKD is a community distribution which is related to OCP as well. So let's have a look at one single simple repo, which is called Origin Branding. Uh, it contains several simple things. First of all, is the Docker file because all pieces of um, OKD and OCP are container images. So this Docker file explains how to build it. We're building uh, from scratch. Then we copy the files in the manifest and label this image as an operator. That means, um, as Chara has explained previously, everything in OKD and OCP is based on operators. So we have a top level operator called cluster version operator, which all it does is applies all the pieces um, to your cluster and they assemble into an OpenShift release. So the manifest we're applying is in fact a simple config map which instructs the console to use OKD branding and set a different base URL. Uh, when the OpenShift console is started and it finds this configuration, it applies the OKD branding. And in the help message, you would have a different documentation base URL. So all of those changes we're looking into are built by CI. You can see we get green marks, meaning it has passed. And everything is done via the pull requests. For instance, here is the output of our CI. We're using um, Kubernetes testing for a project called Prowl in order to build, assemble, and manage our images created by CI. For instance, here we can see that we're using origin for eight image stream as a base because all of the images we make release from are in fact stored in OpenShift itself and they are stored in the form of the image stream tags. So we use 4.8 as a base, build branding image, tag it back into the temporary stable image stream. And we don't run any particular tests because it's just one single config map. And we immediately promote it back to 4.8 image stream. And we promote just this single part. So that instructs CI to um, build the image we have submitted, uh, run some tests if they are present. For instance, in other repos, who might have additional end-to-end -end verifications for AWS, uh, same test for AWS, but an upgrade test using previous state and a new release with this image. GCP, vSphere, and so on and so forth, depending on what kind of repo that is. And once we're done, it would promote it as an official image in the 4.8. So um, the whole release part is stored as a part of image stream in our CI. And once we're done, 
Um, the CI would also track that image stream and would be building new releases out of that, meaning um, you would be able, it would be able to compile them into one single image, which refers to a bunch of other images and fetch some metadata from them. For instance, if we would use OC Adam release info command on some release images, we would be able to extract URLs to each particular commits this image has been built from, uh, as you can see on this picture, for instance. And um, since CI can do that, so that users can also create their own release payloads based on the payloads we released already, replacing some particular images with the fixes they would like to test or some changes they would like to, to have performed. Um, another important part in this is that OKD is sharing a lot of images with OCP itself, meaning um, using the project called Red Hat Universal Base image, we are now able to officially release images which are built on the Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Back in 3.11 days, OKD used to be based on top of CentOS, but now we can use the very same image based on UBI, and that very same image can be used simultaneously in OKD and OCP without any branding or legal problems. And that allows us CI to stop doing a duplicate work. And uh, once the commit lands in the branch, we are able to build an image, promote it to OCP, and at the same time promote it to OKD. Uh, for instance, this script would show us that uh, Cordon's image in the latest origin or so-called OKD payload is the same Cordon's image as in one of the releases of OCP. We're fetching the pulls back for those image. And once we use command OC image info to display information about labels, layers, environment uh, variables, and so on. And if we diff the output from this image, the only difference is just the name where they are being pushed. All the rest is the same because these are the same images. Next, the most important part is our release controller page, where it, that's the front end of our CI which detects that when a new release lands in, a new image lands in the image stream, we can prepare a new release. Let's look at something more greenish like this one. And it builds the difference between the previous release, shows that two new images have landed. Based on the metadata they contain, we can also build links to the pull requests which have caused this change and so on and so forth. And these nightly images um, can eventually be promoted to stable. For instance, this latest 4.7 release used to be a nightly release with the same date. And in order to perform a stable release, we have a small instruction. Uh, what to do, it basically boils down to mirroring the image to Quay uh, running some additional tests and tagging it in the state for stable channel. All the rest is done by CI itself, which automatically updates the update graph, runs additional tests, and we can see that users from the previous releases can upgrade and what's the test result for that. Um, since the OKD is slightly different from OCD, OCD, as it uses different images in some cases. We also have a different issue tracker. We use OpenShift issues to track OCD specific problems. However, since most of the um, images we're reusing from OCP, for instance, console is copied as is from OCP. So any kind of UI issue you're hitting 
would be reproducible on uh, OCP as well. That means you would file a proper OCP image because you, you would be sure that it happens for OCP as well, and you would get direct developer attention to, to fix it. And um, once we're there, we also request you to, um, let me pick one of my favorite ones. Let's pick the closed. Uh, we also ask you to provide a log bundle, so-called, where a lot of logs from the failed installation or broken cluster itself. Um, that archive should contain all the logs for us to find out what's happening, uh, which part do we need to fix, or what's missing. Um, and after we're done, we're also uploading the client tools to GitHub and send a message to OKD Working Group. Um, so to reiterate, in the end, OKD is a community distribution. That means all the images we're listing here have their GitHub repos, meaning you can rebuild them, tinker with them, replace some parts, and um, collaborate with us to make it better. Uh, we make decisions on the work group calls. Uh, those are recorded by Diane and released to our YouTube channel. Um, OKD4 is no longer an upstream, midstream, or downstream of OCP4. It shares a lot of images with it, but still has its own uh, special replaced parts. Uh, so we coined the term sibling distributions for this uh, kind of an event. And uh, we heavily rely on automation and CI verification and also user feedback when we are releasing uh, OKD. And that concludes my demo. Thank you.